I'd like to say that I made a lot of that up, but all of it uh, is all authentic information that from testimony of soldiers and um, and this next poem came out of uh, came after I'd read been told and read a statistic in the Virginia Quarterly in 2008 which said that the average number of completed suicides per month by US veterans returning from Iraq and Afghanistan is 690. Wounds of war. There is an I in this poem who is as silent as the startled tulips, who can't reach the imagined chime of, where was it he was heading? Before? Before all this dust? Before all the random rocks of where was it that he went, came from? Who is unavailable, waits for, keeps waiting for an appointment to view, looking for the mirror in the stone to see himself again? Who will enter the space between the dying yucca that smells of old books and the jasmine tree whose buds are like pinpricks of blood? who will hear, for the last time, the sound of his own footsteps. I'm going to read you two more poems that are about war, and then I'm going to move on to some other subjects. Because thankfully there are more things happening in the world than war. This next poem was written um, while I was doing the um, manuscript for this, uh, this collection of mine. Um, the uh, bombing of Lebanon started, it was 2006, and um, I, I was watching the news and um, I saw on the news there'd been an Israeli airstrike on a village and uh, 54 civilians had been killed and most of them were children. And I was in the middle of doing edits for this book and um, I, I couldn't continue doing it. Um, I spent days and days and days writing and writing and writing, and in the end, this is the poem that, um, that came out of it. After Kana, July 30th, 2006. I saw the lunchtime news, and now my arms <coughs> ache with the dead weight of children whose bodies, one by one, out of the rubble I have not carried. My fingers clench against one shoulder and under the bent knees of a dead girl whose body in pink pajamas I have not lifted. Her head thrown back, her eyes closed against the dust, whose cold hand against my chest I have not felt. Despair lands like a bloated pigeon on the acacia tree drags down delicate branches, scatters the leaves. Hope disappears over my garden wall like a dragonfly as the leaves of the Virginia creeper turn red too soon. And underneath the trellis where the jasmine creeps, the buddleia drips with purple tears and the butterflies don't care. When the bombing was over in August, a woman walked back into Beirut with her um, baby on her shoulder and a photographer took a photo. And in the photo, the baby is staring out at the photographer as the woman walks back into the ruins of her home. And I wrote this poem for that baby. Testimony of Baby Hey Dover, Beirut, 14th of August, 2006. In days to come, I may grow older, learn to speak the names for anger, fear, forgiveness. But these days, all I know is how my mother often holds my face so tight against her that I feel the tremors of her heartbeat pumping through my veins. The smell of her blood will never leave me. Take your picture now, then tell me why I have been saved.
The reason um, <clears throat> I am so affected by, particularly by the way that war affects children, is because children are so precious, and, um, and that's why it's so tragic. And um, they are the sons and daughters of somebody, the grandchildren of, of, of somebody. So I'm going to move on now and, and, um, and, and read a poem which is about a very precious child to me, which is one of my granddaughters. And it was written when she was small. Um, it's called Dandelion Clocks. Dandelion Clocks by Annie Kaya. In my garden, she crawls small amongst tall grass. Dandelion clocks, like fluffy moons above her head. She blows, and silky plumes stick to her lips, hover in her chuckle, dappled wishes, heartbeats of delight, before the clutter of words. Her fingertips, as small as bluebell cups, trace round and round the garden of my cradling palm, unraveling my lifeline, and drifting dandelion seeds count time backwards, replanting me in the red earth of my own beginning. <laughs> 